call us to order at 5.30. Reception um, <coughs> of guests, no. Um, any changes, updates, for the revision, uh, agenda revisions? There may be an addition. I'm gonna wait for Bill to come. I think there's an addition, <laughs> at least to the discussion. Comments and correspondence. Um, I know that Jack is here to be part of the um, use of Rec Board 3.2 versus Athletic Director. So if there's no objection, I would suggest that we move that mm -hmm. ahead. So um, this was. Yeah, you asked it. Okay, got it. We've used it discussed because of something I had heard about the other schools and it's different across and perhaps we need to discuss it. So to speak. All right. Um, I have no information um, about this item. So. Lindy, you're out. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Well, I wanted to know what the discussion was because it wasn't clear, but I have a sense. What came to my attention was the other elementaries are using an athletic director model, which we used to here years ago, and we're using the rec board or rec person versus uh, a school person. And I was wanting more information about why, and I knew there had been maybe smoother work going on using the athletic director in a school or not, so. I can speak to just the history of my yeah. nine years. It's yeah. always been the rec board since I've been here. It could have, could it have been. It wasn't before, it was Steve Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, so in my time, it's been the rec board. Um, so I can't speak to before that or how long ago that was, mm -hmm. but we, we have had it that way at least the last nine years. And also the town voted two years ago, right? To so that we can operate with Talis, how you guys operate. Mm -hmm. Do I have that wrong? I don't think there was any vote. With Talis? Yeah, there, there was a change in the, in the rec field. So you were not just attached to East Montpelier, that you could have Talis kids in. Well, as a rec program, we, we do, um, if we have space, certainly welcome students from other programs mm -hmm. who may not have a program or who may be in a situation, different situations. So we've. We do that. I think that's so. I just to I'm Jack's out right um, <laughs> The rest of you know me. Um, I'm currently the rec board chair, um, and I also am the coordinator for the basketball program here. It's the second year I'm doing that. Um, I've been a coach and a parent of kids who played here for you know, seven years or, or so now. Um, I don't know about that piece historically. We are uh, the only rec program. recently from the, the most recent um, Berlin School Board meeting that they may consider going back to that model. Um, my understanding was that a couple years ago, Callis removed themselves from that model and went back to the in-school uh, model. Mm -hmm. There's an athletic director that's shared by Callis in Berlin. Um, there is, I guess they have the title of athletic director at Remy. There's a person who's different this year than there was last year, but who's overseeing that. And um, in my experience, Dobie does not have anyone who plays any of those roles that um, so we all operate, I think, a little bit differently. Uh, I, for me, what I've seen, having worked with, um, again, as a parent and a coach, and now the last couple of years more kind of behind the scenes, um, because of the way we're set up, uh, I think the, the resources that we're able to offer students, the opportunities we're able to offer students, uh, I think <coughs> is a great benefit to the kids here at East Montpelier. Meaning the rec board. Meaning the, the rec board, the, the setup of our program, yes. So we have a, a coordinator for soccer program here, we have a coordinator for basketball, and we have a coordinator for baseball, and that's a, a little different, Central Vermont Little League kind of runs all that, so that that's a little different position, but um, just in the last couple years in, in my dealing directly with uh, basketball programs, uh, I've seen other schools s struggle in, in their model with the budget just to get five extra basketballs or to upgrade something they need just um, to be able to, to do what they need to, to, to really function at the same level as, as other schools. And um, 
because of our model, I've, I've seen a situation where uh, we have the resources if we need it to put, to put back into our programs, which we do on a yearly basis. Uh, and we've never, in my time as a coach here for years, or in my time here uh, at more of an administrative level, have I seen a situation where we couldn't address the problem right away uh, and make it a, a better situation <coughs> for the, the kids in our programming as well as the rec field here. But do you that's charge for like, basketball? <laughs> we do. There's a registration fee that, that we use, and that generally all that money goes back in um, to that program. Same for soccer. Same for soccer, yeah. yes. I baseball, again, baseball is a different animal, so I, because that's, that's mm -hmm. all sent from our league. But mm -hmm. um, the money that the, uh, we're allocated money by the town each year the, mm -hmm. the, to use for maintenance on the field and that sort of thing. And then the money that we earn through registration for athletics here as well as um, concessions at their soccer gyms and that sort of thing, that's all rolled back into the program. So last year I was able to, we had a, we had a switch in the in the district where we um, switched the size of the balls that three, four students used to a smaller, more appropriately sized ball for them. We were able to upgrade um, our materials right away to get the appropriate number of balls, cages. I was able to, to get uniforms, a lot of pieces, and I I heard and watched and tried to, to help with advice. Other folks in the district struggled to, to even pull things together to that, even though we had all voted that this was the right thing to do, and it, and it is the right thing to do. So just in my experience, um, I feel like our program is, is set up uh, really well to give our students, our student athletes here, um, whatever they need. And because again, we're a rec program, if there's somebody, uh, we get students here who are uh, Orchard Valley kids, or again, occasionally a kid from a Montpelier or a Cowles or somewhere, for some other reason, this is a better fit for them. We're able to offer those opportunities um, because of the resources we have. If a family can't afford to pay the registration fee, we can scholarship them. So. Um, I've seen a lot, a lot of great results in the program here in my time, and um, I've seen the difference in the program, seeing it now the last two years, the rest of the programs in the district. So I feel strongly that we're doing things the right way. Right. That was kind of, I wanted to know how I can working. speak the school's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge relief for me <laughs> not to have it on my shoulders <laughs> or to ever think about it or deal with it. We do have our PE teacher who has been part of the rec board, so he's kind of that liaison between school and the rec. Um, and he does all of the scheduling of the gym and that sort of thing, so I feel like the school does have a connection to the rec. We're not like totally out of the picture. Um, and obviously they're all our kids, but um, I don't deal with the headaches of what I hear some of the other principals in schools dealing with that side of things. And we're in, and I can at least speak to my time, um, we're in pretty constant contact mm -hmm. yeah. with the administration here at the school, mm -hmm. um, not just really the facilities, but anything that comes up along the line, so we're on the same page. Yeah, I'm, I'm always kept in the know, but I don't have to be the one dealing with them day to day, which is, for me, a huge benefit. I don't think the principals ever speak it here, even when it was yeah. somebody. I passed, I made a call. Okay. Oh, okay. I just asked. I'm not sure that parent was. I, I know that there's um, recently from a, a meeting related to the soccer wrap up that I was at that there there is sort of a I don't know what levels a bit of a groundswell in Berlin to consider going to a rec program. And again, my understanding is that their last school board meeting a week or two ago that that was brought up as just a discussion piece. So I, I don't know. If I want to speak. Yeah, they were, they just had a discussion about it. Thoughts right now, either way, or meetings at this point. From my perspective, if it is not a proposal to do something, don't fix what isn't broken. Correct. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was what I yeah. was. Yeah. It was an issue. Yeah. Was both of your schools uh, own the rec fields? No, even more big wigs. Because I know we Eight don't. People. But uh, does, does Berlin own the, the fields out? Out in back, they do. <laughs> Callis has a mixture. <laughs> Blisters on town fields. Rummies on town fields. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think I hear a pretty yes. strong consensus. Of, of the yeah, and it's been great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. No, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if you were doing that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jack. I didn't because yeah. I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, I didn't think you needed to do that. We could talk to him about it. We could do it in there, too. Okay. There is an addition to the agenda. 
Okay. And it would also be a release. Um, under probably under discussion and action. Yeah, in action, yeah. And it would be called. There, um, there would be under discussion is about um, working with Cal's for music instruction. And right now there's points. I'm gonna just gonna say this. Please do not react because mm -hmm. we need to give you the discussion. But a point one reduction in music teacher. Eddie and yes. Eddie and yes. Starting immediately would be the proposal. So then an action item to to reduce it by point. Um, I'm going to bring us back to the consent agenda. Um, Matt, are you here with the particular piece? I just miss you all terribly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just interested in you discussions know, about educational outcomes and okay. budgets. So okay. that's why I'm here. <coughs> just if there was some particular thing, we no. can move it up. But no, it's, thanks. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask if I could have a motion to approve the minutes of October 24th. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion of the minutes of October 24th? Seeing none. All of those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed abstain. And that brings us to budget draft number one. Okay. Before we get too far into this I just wanted to do some context setting with the budget um, and where we're at right now and Alicia will take care of all detailed questions will go to Alicia uh, so I don't have to <laughs> field those uh, no in all seriousness one, one of the things I want to talk about is a little bit just where we are this year and with budget development so um, Stephen was part of a meeting at the executive committee back in August where we tried to think up of a way of developing budgets this year with Act 46 not knowing where that was going to conclude or what the recommendation would be from the State Board. Also during this time of transition, I believe trying to be as open with the budget process as even more than we have been in previous years is a good place for us to be. Um, as of today, and I've been saying this to all of the boards, um, and you're the last one to hear it, I don't even know what town report's going to look like in the town report. So um, things are really up in the air. I think when, that, when we have times like these, the best thing to do is keep things as open, even more open than we think they should be. Um, so my, my decision that I've made, and I've talked with all the chairs about this and have been given support of it, is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring you, this is a level service budget. Nothing's really changed in here. It's kind of taking up, there were student need changes. We adjusted for that and gave you what the budget is for next year. Um, it, you know, we know that it looks like the board's going to uh, approve us to be a force merger from what they provisionally have done. So looking at that, um, you know, we're, our plan is to combine all the budgets the way they are into one budget and not look at things across the whole spectrum and look for FY21 for efficiencies and reduction and savings. So that said, I still would like to have as much input into the budget process. So my plan is that we bring you this here in November and December we'll bring you a draft too. Because once the board, the state board rules, um, the board that has authority over FY20 is the new board that is seated at town, is elected at town meeting day, if all the timelines work. So in that case, the transition board that's called for in the articles that sits somewhere from the 30th day beyond the state ruling, um, they have two tasks, to set up a way for elections to happen and uh, develop a recommended budget to be recommended to the new board. So I think any, and knowing that most of the people that will be on the transition board and I'm inferring that at least some of our, if not most of our members of that new board will come from existing board members, that doing this work here together will make it a lot 
easier mm -hmm. and that a lot smoother. So my plan is to keep bringing you, budget, bring you a budget in December and in January. It may mean we, usually you've had a meeting on Martin Luther King night, because mm -hmm. that's the, this is the traditional, it's the third Monday. Um, my real quandary is right now, and I was talking to one of our town clerks today about it, is I said, I just don't know what the town report's gonna look like. It could be as much as the principal and superintendents and board chair's letters and saying, please stay tuned for more information on the budget. You know, I think we'll have some other things in there about Act 46 and, and things going forward. I, but I, I just don't want to presume that, you know, and it's also going to be letting our electorate know that, hey, you used to get a town report that looked like this, and now it looks like this. And why is that and where we're at? And I think that's going to take a lot of communication starting here in December. Um, I'm really kind of waiting for the, I've already started working with Ben Mara, our communication expert that has done all the publications you've seen the past two years at putting something together as an FAQ of what's going on, mm -hmm. but just really waiting for that. I was working on that today. Um, so the budget that you have here, um, it includes 11.8% 11 11 health increase. Um, I'll let Alicia go through some of the transitions. The WCSU assessments, when this was developed, this budget was just set at 3%. The WCSU budget, not the assessments, but the budget came in at 1.96%. And the executive committee came back for us to come with more possible additions for improving student outcomes. Um, so we'll be talking about that tomorrow night. Um, and then, so then you see overall the pieces that are in here. Um, I can talk specific. So that's what I was gonna let you go for there. Um, is it, does everyone have page four? Do you, are, do you have that? Do you <coughs> I saw it. Okay. I just I didn't um, I didn't get to work to I'll, I'll share the staffing changes because most of that is actually reflective of this year's changes. So last year when you budgeted for this year, um, we had changes in staffing and changes in student needs, which was actually a decrease in student needs this year from what we had last year, which is that point five savings in a paraeducator. Um we also don't need that 0.5 paraeducator next year. So it's not here now, and we're not adding mm -hmm. anything back next year. And then the staffing change um, right below that, the 17,000, is um, we had changes in staff. So those who left or retired were more expensive than those who are here now. Um, other than that, it's basically taking what we have currently. So that, that ended up being a little over $52,000 savings this year and looking at ahead to next year. Um, but otherwise, everything is rolled up from what we currently have to next year in this draft. Does that make sense? Um, with one exception, I believe, and that is the new agenda item mm -hmm. to talk about. I don't think it's... No, it's not, all, that's it's not, it's there. not reflected. It's not in there, but so it's not that much. Savings. That's not much. I think it's a little over 7000 Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone has a question. The, I, I mean, uh, it's not a question. That's not something you guys have control over, but I'm just curious. The, in, the health insurance inflation, yeah. um, did that have to do with, are you guys using a different? Um, We're still using VHI. We switched plans. Switch plans. And but are, you, are you using a different intermediary? Oh, yeah, we are, but that. that was that a wash? Or? That's, yeah, that's not, a, that doesn't even get into this. That's a whole nother. So it doesn't get into the, the account added? It, 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 We're not gonna have it doesn't have a big effect okay. overall. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about it, but mm -hmm. budgetarily it's not a big, oh, okay. it's not no, a big effect. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't need details. The percent comes in, I think. We can do the same thing we're doing this year for that budget change I'm happy with it yeah the other contextual that Stephen you've heard me say but I haven't had a chance to say to this board is the current consumer price index for September for a 12 month for New England is 3.3 percent and government and educational spending is 2.9 percent in New England so that's the inflation rate some people know it as that with consumer price index CPI mm -hmm. just to give you a point of reference 
So you're saying you so the 1.76 is good. Yeah, we, that's. I think we've done. I think we've done well. I mean, all okay. of our budgets in Washington Central on the expenditure side, expenditure sides, we're doing great across all our budgets. I think our highest might be three, three two or three three, for level service. Well, we've talked some, and I don't remember who or what meetings or what for. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I think sometimes. Um, but over the past three, four, five years, um, we've been able to continually, gradually position where East Montpelier is spending wise across the state from right at the very top. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still wouldn't want to suggest we're not a high yeah, spending school, but we've been steadily moving down the list. So closer and closer to average spending. Um, so I'm not, like I said, if we can keep doing exactly what we're doing and I'm at that percentage, I'm happy with, I wouldn't look to take more out of it. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to, I wanted just to ask the question, remember last year we took out some money and then, you know, it was just fund balance, but there were some needs that we had like reduce 30% interventions in one area. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm assuming we're not doing this and if we needed more, you so would be saying that here? I haven't, no? you haven't asked the question yet, so I haven't okay. told you anything. Okay, but that, that, that would be the most important uh, Yes, no, so we have, we have increased interventions from what we had last year. I feel like on the <laughs> academic side of things, we're in a good place mm -hmm. and we have, um, we have the right people doing the right things. I had talked last month about we don't have like a math interventionist and a reading. They they do whatever's cool. needed based on the data. Um, the one area that we've spent a lot of time talking about, and this is no surprise um, to anyone, are our students um, in trauma or those who have social, emotional, behavioral, I won't even say behavioral, social and emotional needs. They come in in a, in a very different place yeah. than... Um, then we would hope for them to come in and they we have um i don't know exactly what that would look like but i feel like if there's any place that we're not meeting kids needs and and we're doing a great job of we have a cohort of teachers who works with dave melnick um this is our second year working with him bringing strategies back to the school sharing with their colleagues um, there's another group of teachers and myself who are going to be taking a course with Dave beginning in January. So I feel like we're trying to get educated and, and learn how to better serve them. Um, but that is probably our pocket of students who I feel the least great about what mm -hmm. we're doing and how we're serving them. Um, I have no answer to you what that should or could look like, just knowing that I feel like on the academic side and the interventions and, um, you know, when we talked content areas, I feel like we're, you know, I feel like we're doing the right things for kids. Mm -hmm. um, the social, emotional, trauma, background, children and families, I feel like we need to do a better job. So what, I know that you're saying we don't know what that means, but does that mean that we should be putting something aside just in well, case that we are able to figure out, since we're also involved in, you know, closing the gap. Right, and that, right. And we know that that's one of the biggest We've talked a lot about what could that look like or should that look like, and um, you know I think it, it's going to take some more exploring. You know we talked about is it a is it a you know some sort of a counselor or is it you know looking at how we use our guidance services or is it having somebody work with be able to be more of a liaison between school and home. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's something that is going to require more thought. Um, so I would say this, and this is one of the things that the executive committee will hear tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. We can't give you details. We know where the issues are. We haven't had time to work with our staff to really try to figure out what the details are. Yeah. This is the tough place of budgeting where a decision has to be made on a money amount. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's what Alicia and I have been talking about this a long time. I'm not, I'm the one that's pushing hard on don't think of staff the way you considerably thought about it. I mean, one of the things... I, and I remember from 25 years ago in my teaching is we had social workers in the schools that I serviced. 
and those are very helpful to go out and work with families. It's not that our, gui our guidance counselors do that too. So, you know, what is it that it needs to be? And I don't think we have that thing figured out. Mm -hmm. and I don't think there's anyone <clears throat> that's that really does have that figured out about how you crack, you know, really help kids that are really struggling. It's a, you know, it's a, you see it in, it's, a, it's nationwide mm -hmm. and probably international in some realm as well. Uh, I think one of the issues here at East Montpelier is the number of students we have and the amount of FTEs we have of a guidance counselor. I don't, I'm not saying that she is the answer or isn't the answer, um, but she was reduced pretty drastically when we hired mm -hmm. her because we wanted a shared position with Calla, so we kind of gave some up and, and knowing that we had Mr. Sherwin's position. Obviously we had the full-time behavior class. Um, yeah, and right. so the behavior is, okay. you know, I see that as a diff, right? Like he can, so when Mary Beth is here, basically what happens, it's a lot of tag teaming. You know, she'll, she'll deal with a situation and then she's not back for two days. So he'll take over and do what he can. Um, and he's very skilled with the behavior side of things, but this isn't always behavior. Um, you know, or it may manifest in behavior, but it's a different, yeah. different issue or it's not, not behavior at all. Um, so just trying to figure out what what is the best solution to this issue i don't know right now but i i feel like we are we are not serving a population of students in a way that we should be serving them i don't know what that looks like yet you know we haven't i ha i know staff come to me all the time and you know we have some pretty major um families in crisis um and pretty major crises but what the is it a dollar amount? I don't know. Is it a person? I don't know. I just know what, you know, what I hear coming to me. So you're like, you're sort of in the first step, right? Yeah. You've sort of identified what is an area for improvement, but we don't have a course of action to think about or consider or budget for. So, I mean, here's the thing. We could go, I mean, Alicia and I could go sit in a room and make up a course of action but that's not the way, right way to do it. Right. The right way is to get our experts who are out there working with the kids and right. say, so what do we what mm -hmm. do we know? Let's review the data. That's, I just said three months worth of work. Right, so yeah. what I'm hearing, and maybe I'm being overly simplistic about it, but what I'm hearing is that this isn't something that we're gonna do for this budget cycle. Well, I, not unless I'm, we I'm get not, something between now I'm, and next next budget cycle right. for you. Yeah. And that's, that doesn't mean we won't. Well, this is, and I don't, this is good work to be doing. Like identifying this issue is important, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the work of this board, um, uh, it's sort of like what you were just saying. Unless we have a proposal in front of us, right? Right now is to bring an awareness to you. Right. You know, I do feel like I feel like this budget represents staffing wise, uh, absolutely to meet the student needs academically. I feel like. You know, there was an increase in interventions this year from last year. We knew that, you know, things kind of dipped last year because we didn't have the personnel. And I feel like we have the right staff. Um, I feel like this is the next right body of work to start thinking about is, okay, so, you know, what about these kids in crisis and families in crisis? And how do we support them? And what does that look like? And what's the school's responsibility? Um, and in asking teachers, which I have, I've done a lot of listening to teachers, um, but asking them, so what would that look like if, if you know, this child's needs were met? What would that look like? And I feel like that is the next body of work mm -hmm. for us to, so, you know, I wanted to bring the awareness to you and, and see what your thoughts were on it. And, you know, you tell me what, should it be something that we think about right now? Should it be something to say, Wait. And from, from my point, yeah. this is going to sound cruel, but it isn't. We're not there with a plan. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is we haven't, we're just starting to, trying to engage, we've been trying for a long time and we're working with our outside agency partners. Mm -hmm. So it's getting that really clear. Um, and it's, you know, all the schools in Washington Central and most of the schools that I know with this are dealing with the same issues. It's just that the issues have become more acute and much earlier mm -hmm. yeah. in age. And so for elementary schools, it's new, right. but we've had some of these same issues 
in middle schools and high schools. It's just that we're seeing it earlier. And it may not even necessarily be new. We have this a different awareness of it, right? And, and people care. And they, not that they did it before, but it's like, oh, yes, and look at this child. And this explains a lot now that we're better educated yeah, yeah, yeah. about what happens outside of school. So what can we do about it? And the teachers in this building, one of the best things about them is that they care so much and they want something to happen. You know, they don't turn their eye and look the other way when yeah. a child comes in. Well, I think that's one of the things, you know, like we can't completely let it fall just on them because they're going to do something, you know, mm -hmm. vital protocol or whatever. But if we can, we know that a kid can't lose a year or wait. Mm -hmm. So even if we are able to put you know, uh, very little pocket of money aside. Well, you guys, I think, because we just budget once a year, right? We don't budget all the time. So if every school pledged to put, you know, X amount to whatever that is, the social worker, the, whatever, while you guys are figuring out what, what you're doing, because that kid doesn't, you know, doesn't have that year to lose. And since we're doing all that work and trauma, you know, and I, I totally understand what you're saying, but I just feel like, you know, I, if yeah. we know that, if we know that the need is there, it's up. But I can't quantify the need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The, need not, the yeah. need might not be addressed by money. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, it might yeah. be addressed by changes within the system. The way right. the school is running. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not in favor of just putting money in the budget, because maybe we need it. Maybe we need it. I, I mean... If there's a specific proposal, mm -hmm. but if it's, and do we want to just kind of put this slush right. fund in there? That's a that's a bad word to use. To put this mm -hmm. contingency money in that we don't even know if we're going to use. Yeah. I, I don't think we want to even have that discussion. What I what I would like to do, and I will begin doing, um, is having the conversation with the staff around what you know what. What is, it, what is the current reality? What are the needs you see? How are they not being met? What would that look like if they were met? Um, because it's just not a conversation we've had. We just haven't, we haven't had to to this point, and I feel like we do. Well, and so maybe this comes hard too. Um, I don't question the caring, and I don't question the sincere efforts. Um, But a, a, an issue like this may require um, input from expertise outside of mm -hmm. our school. Right. I think that would be uh, dead. It, 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 it has to, the, yeah. the staffs have to be involved, and I yeah. agree 100%. Yeah. But I, in some ways, I think it's unfair to mm -hmm. say, okay, staff of East Montpelier, figure out this problem. Or I would say this mm -hmm. that's what you have a general fund balance for. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as long as. Okay. Right. Because if. Somewhere if, if we need it, we need it. We, some I mean, major need you guys, you know this. If we if we need it, if we can't reconfigure the budget, we usually come to you. But yeah. all the principals know my first question, which is, so where's that in your budget? Where are you going to shift? Mm -hmm. And usually we find it. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Right, because it's really a matter of reprioritizing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other discussion of budget draft number one? So just we'll be coming back in a month. Is you this is I mean so as far as draft two, do you want a draft two? Do you need a draft two? Well, I want them to have a draft two, and I want them to know more numbers, and frankly, I want them to start to see some comparisons of what it looked like individually with the whole. We're, we need the next. You mean as part of the SU? I want them to look at it two different ways. I mean, yeah, there we need to have another budget discussion. So that they can yeah. and, and show those what is direction? But we're yeah. we're not we're, telling we're, Alicia she needs to right to yeah. look yeah. To yeah. take yeah. money out. We're comfortable with the so that's what I was bottom asking. line. Sorry. Right. Okay. So and I think, you don't. All right. No. Yeah. I think if you happen to have the conversation where you come up with a potential plan mm -hmm. of action for this trauma, you can add it to budget too if you need. Mm -hmm. You know, and we could evaluate it then. Don't be afraid to do that. If you magically have nine a lot hours of time. Time. Right. And, and external yeah. partners yeah. that all fall into line exactly yeah. as they should <laughs> right, of course. So okay. that usually yeah. happens. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And the report looked great too. And
excited about the numbers too. But I think that's growing. Not a lot, but it's yeah, a population. So yeah, uh, you'll see the the included in there was all the budget trends, what you've seen every year. So I didn't think I needed to explain that, but then any questions over the budget, multi-year budget trends. And the last page on page 16 is the one that has the key figures for you about what is a penny, what's the expense budget. Yeah. Could you remind me the individual enrollment versus equal as people like this? Ah, uh, yes. So what happens is, is um, what they, there's factors for different uh, categories of a student. I think that's the nicest way of saying it. So if a student is on free and reduced lunch, there's an increase, there's a 25% increase. Okay. If a student is, is receiving um, English as a second language service, um, there's an increase to that. What they want to do at the end, if there's, let's say, 75,000 students in Vermont, which is approximately right, um, they want the equalized pupils to actually meet the actual students. Mm -hmm. So the way they do that is the last factor that gets changed is what is the percentage of an elementary or the weight of an elementary student. Mm -hmm. Last year it was about 0.93 or 0.94, but it really changed last year. It came up like almost three or four percentage points mm -hmm. because some the what was called phantom students from years ago were going away. And so, because of a whole other piece. So that equalize means there's a certain weighting factor. Like for every high school student, nine through 12, there's a 3% bump. High school is more expensive to run than mm -hmm. the other schools. So <clears throat> that all gets put into the mixture. <clears throat> and you'll hear about the weighting formula is there's a study that the legislature asked for and to redo all that in 173. Um, and Vermont has one of the least equitable funding formulas for students in the nation. It's been graded and it's not, it does not do well for kids in poverty or minority. And so um, in uh, Lindy's district, Barry's, John's been one of the people championing that is that it's really not funding equal, very equitable for, for Vermont. And we've been graded on a pretty low curve on that. So that's one of the reasons they're looking at that is to maybe reestablish the weights that are given for students with certain categories. Does that answer enough? Yeah. Darcy, so. We also want the highest first year spending in the nation. Not the equalized, but just what we spend on kids, and part of that's the rural nature of it. And it's hard to make it work. Point three in the SBA. So, I was going to share three things. So, I because we didn't have time to uh, talk about the conference, and uh, Bill was at the conference uh, two uh, on October. Now it seems so long ago. That's why I like doing it right after because it seems so long ago. And I'll be brief because I know you have to go to Stephen. So, the conference was in designing for equity and opportunity. And the three things that I wanted to highlight, uh, highlight was uh, uh, first, uh, Caroline Hill, who was one of the presenters, I ended up going to her workshop to bill her to her speech uh, at, the, at the beginning. She was uh, wonderful. She did a whole history on why you know, Vermont is 93.7% uh, white. But three things that are related to the outcomes and that we, we've been talking about is that she, one of the things that she said through the conference was that the assumptions made by adults of kids have a greater impact on the achievement gap. You know, as we are talking about this in our quality committee, we keep talking about that. And we, we don't talk about all those biases. We don't have the diversity in our schools, but we have the diversity in socioeconomics. So, so that was you know, a great. And you can Google her up, and she has great uh, things on, on YouTube, and she has a small TED talk. Uh, and then I've shared this with the part of the group in the quality committee that, uh, and just wanted to share with you too, that we're so focused on the outcomes sometimes that we forget about the experience. So, and you know, I feel like it's my poor, it's my that we've been doing a good job about acknowledging the whole child and it's how that translates into when we monitor, we, we're still, you know, we are doing a greater job now of how we monitor 
sort of past meeting, and we're still trying to to link, you know, that other part, the whole child, as, you know, or what the experience of school means mm -hmm. for them. And and then the last thing was that she talked a lot about in, and I'm big in this the inter interdependence is the true north. She kept saying through her other part of the. You know, conference and part of that resilience movie and the trauma training, we keep talking about, you know, how that connection with that one adult is so important. Mm -hmm. And he, what she was saying is that it's also between, it starts with us and that we're all interdependent, like, you know, like now that we're going to be a, a whole, just one, we're all interdependent with one another. And the more that we realize that, the better that we can get at writing new stories is what they call it. because he too focused a lot on that we do at this favor with the to the kids not just the diversity kids but the um, the other kids that you know the 93.7 percent of white kids in Vermont because they are not aware of this uh, of uh, being able to be in, in school <coughs> diversity is also a handicap yeah, for them. So she, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's something that we need to acknowledge either, you know, by the books we read or whatever we do. So the, I keep saying the last thing, but there's two more. Um, and then the last thing she said was that equi there were two presenters, but I'm gonna, just going to share her today. The equity is a verb and is the process, not the end. And sometimes when we talk, especially or just for we keep referring as equity as like being that end point for us, like how do we get there and you know, it's uh, in, um, and that is a product of, of design, so the better that we do to redesign what we do right now, which is what we are trying to do. And last, and I wanted to ask Bill about this, is that uh, the NEA had uh, Beth, uh, Beth O'Brien uh, do a little movie that is called I Am From Here. Uh, and they showcase this movie, and people that have attended the Equity Conference, I think you were at the last, no, you were not, but so uh, that the Equity Conference in Montpelier too, uh, this movie is uh, just, the way that it's described about institutional racism in Vermont schools, you know, it's different where we are, but Bill talked about that there was some prep work needed before showing them at schools, and I would like to move that process along. I know that we have a lot of, it's a half an hour movie, but I think it's, Super educational. Let the kids for, do it. The kids are doing it. The what? The kids are doing it. Alicia hasn't been contacted yet, but the kids are doing it. The kids. I don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to bring awareness. I didn't know. Oops, I didn't know the high school it. kids are doing something. Like yeah, this. you're going to get contacted soon. And yeah. they're the ones that they're will at Berlin. With you. They're at Berlin, right? Yeah. Okay. They are at Berlin. They're getting and ready it's for I Berlin. From here? No, it's not that, but they have something similar. similar. Okay. Yeah, but you know that that movie would be so. Bessa Bryan is the author. It's called "I Am From Here," and is the not the author, but the NEA sponsored it, and she's the filmmaker. And okay. So, can I ask again, what is the prep work needed? Our staff needs some training. I'm in a public meeting. I'm not going to talk more about. It. I'll be glad oh, to talk okay. to you later. But it sounds like there is momentum from the students. Who yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is that it's on the website of the, I don't know, the link is not on the website, but Martha has been going all around talking okay. about the, the movie. So, you know, one way or another, the teachers are going to find about it. And it's basically five teenagers talking about mm -hmm. what is for them. And my point is that, especially in, you know, in our school, there is no diversity. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, it's very informative, you know, why wait until they're mm -hmm. afraid to, and, and this is a very easy way to show, you know, I don't think there's anything in that movie that is not appropriate for, no, not even no, for little so, kids. No, <laughs> no, no, so, yeah, no. So it'd be great to, you know, I just wanted to bring well, attention to that. To know. And, uh, and then I'll talk about the other guy at the next meeting, because otherwise you guys need to go. Okay. So thank you for listening up. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that brings us to 3.4 Act 46 update on subcommittees. There are two subcommittees. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Yeah, yeah, you can go first. All right. So, <laughs> why is Bob? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so I'm with that committee. Now, I see you got it. Yeah. I can uh, get the um, uh, so we've met three times. Um, I felt like today's meeting was actually pretty, um, a little bit more effective than the last one. Um, we 
we're in the process of reviewing five, we went over pros and cons for five um, I don't know if I'd call them options or but you know Models. potentially um, for how to handle the debt um, all except for one would require legislative action so um, but we're putting together pros and cons of each and we're going to develop a report um, to present at the December 5th uh, supervisory uh, board meeting. Uh, you guys have any questions about who's on the committee? Um, who's on the committee? <laughs> Scott Thompson, Rick. I don't know how to pronounce Rick's last name. Keen. 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 Um, Will <coughs> Baker, Peter Schrober, Schrober, and myself. That's Nobody it. from Middlesex. Unless you guys have more questions. I, I guess I do have a question just because I got some input. I didn't get this when I talked to you, but I got an, a phone call from Janet this afternoon. And uh, we had talked about, and I know that uh, your tech committee brought up, but we talked about bringing part of our, or as much of our capital plan into paying the debt. And they did some research of what uh, you know, that is less than 35 cents for every dollar on medication spending. Yep. But in any event, that we should think smart about that as a whole, not just mm -hmm. as us. If that is the best investment, I shared this with you right. when he no, walked in today. I'm going to head home then. Uh, yep. But his fever is okay? back over 103, so. Oh, no. Okay. My son yeah. had a fever, and so. He's home. He's home alone. So yeah. oh, no. uh, yeah. I've got to head out. Okay. Well, I hope he feels better. 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 I hope you don't catch it. Yeah, maybe. It's mainly. almost inevitable that I'll catch it. <laughs> 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 I apologize. That's okay. okay. Thank you for your talk. Yeah, it comes first. So, so, so what is it, that is smart. We have talked, you brought this up, but that we are smart about it. So what they were saying is that we should think about and so I had a thing about this, is that it, it might be better used to do work in other schools than to pay down the debt just because of the interest rate that we paid for. You have to pay. redo the bonds anyway. It's one of the things I was saying tonight. Redo. We have to. We don't. I don't know if I can just transfer the bonds, but Lori was talking to me. We have to reissue all the bonds going into a merged district. I, I think we have to think pretty carefully about that. Yes. Because it doesn't really. Reduce <coughs> the burden on, on the tax, towns. yeah, and to so. And right, so the discussion discussion about that was it was all any any it was a more of a sign of goodwill to mm -hmm. the other towns yeah. than anything, mm -hmm. uh, realizing that it wasn't going to have too much of an impact on. Yeah, it. And I'm not sure that <coughs> that makes a lot of sense. I'm saying out loud. Um, oh, good. There might be some other options. Who, where did this modeling come from? That you were we don't have, we, we don't have a So Scott, a Scott did some modeling. Scott did some uh, modeling. Oh, okay. oh right. Well, you, uh, okay. And we discussed that the modeling he did, it actually didn't have the correct number, the correct, correct numbers in yeah. some of it. So, okay. yeah. um, so that was a part of the discussion. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I, I struggle with, I will say that I struggle with numbers because, and I was asking Bill for clarification earlier because I don't think we can nail it down to the actual effect on each town very accurately anyways right. until we get into the budgeting process. And, and the numbers that it or the have been put budget. publicly on front porch forum and places are not accurate. Yeah. Coming out, that never happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. But... Just because well, they're said loudly so, doesn't mean that they're accurate. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I guess what my emphasis is today was I don't want to publish numbers that, um, especially when they're long-term numbers that would potentially change yearly, um, that wouldn't, wouldn't accurately reflect mm -hmm. the total burden on the other towns mm -hmm. that... Uh, so is one of the ideas to restructure the bond, just 
I don't know. I was talking with Lori the other day. It was a quick five-minute conversation, but we were starting to list all the tasks we have to do, and we have to reissue all the bonds. I don't know if that means just change the names on them or if we actually have to go back out. Once it's merged. I'm go back we, out forever. I'm hoping we don't have to go back out. We can just change names on all the bonds because the rates will be a lot mm -hmm. worse now than they were then. <laughs> yeah, like, that would be oh my goodness. Oh my God. I don't think we do, but I mean, it's we have to do a lot of work with mm -hmm. banks. I mean, we have... 42, yes, 42 different bank accounts right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. six times seven. So, right. and we're gonna bring them down to six. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, I mean, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of financial work and a lot of legal entity yep. work. Yep. So, well, I mean, once, yeah. I mean, that, I'm gonna, I've been telling this to everybody, once there's a book from the board, because of the timetable, there's a ruling from the state board, we're gonna start, because mm -hmm. just to get to July 1, Mm -hmm. We gotta start. Be a challenge. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. We gotta start. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the one of the thing. I mean, not coming from East Montpelier, it will sound selfish, but one of the things I try to keep stating is we continue to look at whatever the bond yeah, the bond period is, it, but in reality. We're going to be a merged district for the next, I said, a thousand years today. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the next, yeah. For as long as we can foresee. Mm -hmm. So, so eventually, this is a short term problem. In, this is a short term words. problem, and it's not a great problem to be in, and I understand, mm -hmm. but eventually things will iron out. Well, the last time this was done was 50 years ago, because it was the mid 60s. That they closed all the long term schoolhouses and built this one, mm. did the same thing with Dallas. And yeah, but the, people seem yeah, to forget that yeah, it's, it's been done. done. Right. The thing that, and I just want to state the facts because yeah. with the at that point there was federal money on the doll on the uh, on that the ground to build the schools. Yeah, to build the schools. Yeah. That that's the difference. Right. The yeah. people's local there is money did not pay state for money. these schools. The yeah, state money. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's been no state money since two thousand three, two thousand four. Right. Which goes back to the original one of the many rumbles about mm -hmm. the bond, which is yes. that we had to do work when there was no, no external money right. whatsoever. Right. Yeah. So if those back. supports had not yeah. been deleted along the way, yeah. then our debt. Yeah. Well, I, would I look think different. that it would have to, it's going to have to come back. I don't think it is for. Mm -hmm. Because, of it, well, it's. With all the mergers, schools are going to need, and if the state, no, there's no pressure. It's not going to come back through Scott's administration for sure, but <laughs> but it should. If no, that's where I don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. I think once it's been taken away like that, it's up to you to take care of your buildings or your schools. And but it was not for taking care of your buildings and your schools. But if it's if if really truly what we care is for the best education of our kids, we do. the building. I know we do, but yeah, but you it's know, really just it's, a matter of. Uh, I mean, when you really break it down, yeah. it's just a matter of semantics, right? Mm -hmm. Which yeah, yeah, the yeah. money yeah. Taxes, comes yeah, out of because it's all the yeah. same dollars, dollars and cents. Yeah. So and it's all state dollars. So arguably, yeah. this actually. Mm, at least it's less complicated because you're not trying yeah. to bank on some external dollars and, and that's how, leverage why we those did it. funds. It's all yeah. coming so, from the Ed Fund. Yeah, I was going to say, well, it's all coming technically from we are banking on education. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next mm -hmm. committee, the Articles of Agreement Committee, is, <coughs> we have met three times. We are going to meet tomorrow at 4.30 if anybody wants to join us. We created a uh, a, a little table of priorities if, so that we could start working on the Articles of Agreement. And we had one really good meeting where we got through, you know, all of our first priority articles, which was nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then at our last meeting, we started to get in more of the hot items, so we didn't do as much progress. We're still waiting for a, the Board of Education met last Thursday, not last Tuesday, yeah, last Tuesday. And um, at that meeting, there were some changes. We had sent some questions. We, uh, we wanted to uh, clarify uh, who could be appointed and uh, it, what Act 49 really meant, if we actually can write articles of agreement. She came back with uh, their amendments. So we're still trying to clarify that, get a council bill reached out to Scott Cameron and 
Tracy is her name? Yeah. No, Patricia Tracy. Patricia Tracy, uh, who's, because yeah, he's in the process of retiring. I don't know if you had any luck with Pietro. He was going to reach out to Pietro, and tomorrow we'll give some options for who we're going to pick as council. And right now the plan is to move ahead and keep it, you know, drafting articles as agreement with the understanding that they are amendments, but if we put them out to vote, that we would have the articles of agreement that best represent our new unified uh, district. Uh, Donna, we, I sent her some questions after the meeting to try to get it on, on writing, and she's hoping to get back to us before our meeting tomorrow. She can get back to me today. And they're also putting out, um, and our, uh, Secretary French asked her to put an outline of what really the dates meant on those 90 days. What does it mean? And, you know, you're going to go for a vote. So he's trying to do, do a more comprehensive uh, cheat sheet of what that is. Um, but by any means, we're not, we're not done. And we're hoping that on December 5th, I guess we would have to decide what the next course of action is. We haven't talked about that in our meeting yet, but uh, you know, the, well, at least my hope, and this is, doesn't represent the entire uh, board, is that we're going to be able to go through all this Arizona agreement, get this to our legal counsel, and be able to pass this on for that 90-day period, and if they need to be cleaned up, but give something so that we're able to respond to something as opposed to trying to write or because of the agreement in a committee of 20. So. I don't know if you have something to add. Bill or Matt is here. I've been, I acknowledge that I've been driving Matt a little crazy with my <laughs> approach, but no, I, I just um, tend I'm to be an optimistic. Around, <laughs> but, yeah. So who's on that committee? It, it's a good committee. It's Matt, uh, Chris McVeigh. Um, of course, I'm going to forget about here everybody I'm right up. now. Chris Winters. Uh, I'm trying to go around the table of the last one. And Dorothy. Dorothy and yeah. Carrie. Yeah. So it's, it's good. So I, I think everybody has the intention of our, I, I, I think we all feel like it would be nice to put something out to the voters. I do understand that it's going to be a question with the town clerks, you know, to bring out a special vote. And, you know, and we wouldn't want them to vote no on this because what it means would be it serves them out to very dead, right? You put out to. We would just have the the existing. Uh, what are they? I can't even think about it. Articles of agreement. No, no, but the existing. They're called the. Yeah, the article, the boards, the Vermont the draft, State State. The draft State. Article. So we would just have those thirteen. We wouldn't have been able to to put anything on it. And it's not like we're going to be that creative either, because we're in. A, you know, it has to comply with the law, and we're mm -hmm. looking at uh, other other places in, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. I don't think there's much else to say. I think you gave me a nice update of where you're at. Yeah. Okay. I believe that brings us to 3.5, the additional oh, discussion, yeah. discussion mm. item. I was approached by Kat um, Thayer, the principal at Callis. Recently, there is a need for a music teacher in her building. Um, very part-time position, and we currently have a point seven FTE music teacher, decent player. So she does not work Mondays or Tuesday mornings. Sam doesn't. Um, the need from Callis was a um, a point four position. So two days a week, mm -hmm. which would mean we would need to find a decrease in a half day a week to make it work. Um, Sam and I spent a lot of time looking at her schedule and <clears throat> trying to make it be a doable job and not cut services for kids, of course. Um, we were able to make it work. She, mm -hmm. she, it would be a very tight schedule for her. She would be um, at Callis all day on Monday, a half a day on Tuesday, and a half a day on Friday. Um, but... I was able to make it work with classroom teachers to do some shifting. Um, she's going to just be 
um, her planning periods will look differently, right? Yeah. She may be there planning for here or here, and that happens. Mm -hmm. It's happened um, with a guidance counselor. It happens with the art teacher, and it works. Um, the the benefit to all of this is that it will serve callous kids, which they need, mm -hmm. a music teacher, um, right now. And the benefit for Sam is it will give her full-time work, work, which yeah. she's, she's really wanted, wanted and needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Kat actually texted me as we sat down, please let me know what the board says. Yeah, I got the same text. She texted both of us at the same time. I was driving. Oh, I was like, okay. I didn't open Bluetooth. it. But, um, Bluetooth was reading it. So I would like to make the recommendation. It can work. Um, it can work without cutting programs to kids. Mm -hmm. um, and with, with Sam just needing to be a little bit more flexible and um, with shifting in schedules, which the teachers were good about. The hope is to begin after Thanksgiving. We started working on this about a week and a half ago, um, but it would mean a change in her FTE beginning mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving. And and the proposal would be um, that this would continue on, Callis, and, and we've had great yeah. working relationships with lots of other teachers mm -hmm. in the past um, and continue to have that, and it just works well for staff to be able to have full-time work. Mm -hmm. Did they have a music teacher? That, and, okay. I can't go into it. No, I know. I was just But curious. they did they have do one. do not have a music teacher now. Now. Right now. But they had in the past. They, they, they had one increase to They had one. Before. Resigned. They, right. Effective There's last Thursday. There's no increase Thursday. for Callis. It's yeah. just to maintain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Maintain the point. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the only question that occurs to me is, can, can a teacher have like 1.1 FTE between the two districts? No, <laughs> no by labor law, we can't do that. Nay, nay. Labor law won't allow us to do that. Just and it's over actually, time, over time. <laughs> when all of this is done, it's probably like a, a 0.65 and mm -hmm. a point. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. a little no, bit I of, just, it's not know. quite, in order to make it work, there's like a half an hour, one day extra we need her. And it, it will figure out the math piece of okay. it, but. Um, I, you know, if you could do a 1.1, 1 .1, then financially, <laughs> I mean, really, yes, it means yeah. that we're working 0.1 more. Because now Sam has a full-time job. Yeah, she yeah. needs so it. I think it's, She's, I yeah, think yeah. it's good awesome. all the way around. And and she is an incredible music teacher. Yes. Callis is going to be lucky to have her. Yeah. So uh, that's the discussion portion. Great. Okay. If there's any other questions. Um, is there any objection to going right to the action agenda for that? So they can text mm -hmm. Kat. <laughs> Kat will be fine. Okay. She can she wait, can wait till the end. She can wait till the end. I can make a motion to, to reduce, it would be reduce, reduce, to reduce point point one, one, mm -hmm. the music position in East Montpelier and accept the recommendation. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I believe we are on to administration report, page 17. I don't know if there's any questions. Do you know off the top of your head what this maps out to for the number of kids in the class in the school? No. <laughs> I should. Just Total numbers. We have oh, I do. I wrote it down. Did you? Yeah. Um, so that's why I asked. 189 K through 6 plus the 33 K is 219. <coughs> Thank you. I guess I did have one, one question, and it's mostly because I don't know what, what it is. So it common, it went create common assignments that homework, like common assignments or project-based projects for the- The- um, The comprehensive balance assessment system. The October in service. Yeah. With, so yeah, so I can talk to that. Um, so I was here with the, all the kindergarten teachers yeah. from the SU. We kind of broke up by grade clusters and they met in all the different buildings around the SU and they created, so what the kindergarten team did is they took all their fall early literacy assessments and early math assessments and created assignments based on those so that 
every child in kindergarten across the entire SU is being what parents are seeing on the portal is something similar. Oh. So there's, they're called assignments. Assignment's not really the best That's a term to use. Okay. Um, it's really an opportunity for learning. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, it could be an interview, it could be a formative assessment, it could be something in writing, it could be having a child read out loud to you. So it's not really a like handwritten mm -hmm. assignment like you think of an assignment. But um, so, so across the grades in K through six, they worked on having common assignments so that every third grader in the SU is getting scored on the same types of things. They're not all the same, but they worked on what they could create in common together. Mm -hmm. That work started in August at our August in service. We spent a half a day together, and then we continued to do it in October after playing with the, the system for a while. Um, and some people are hoping to do it again in January, though we haven't determined what that <coughs> looks like yet. It's just so that we're on the same page as far as what teachers are assessing and sharing with parents. So you're basically okay. calibrating your... Exactly. Uh, Our assignments. Assignments yeah. and grading and yes. assessing. Yeah. yeah. Aligned with your report system. Exactly. Yeah. And then the other was just the comment of, like, amazing that in one of I, I was trying to find it but I can't remember where it is but that you were able to put in that block of a 30 to 9 yeah, especially it did so work. that's very quick action so we're I, still like, we we meet you, and talk about you. this all the time I mean <laughs> this is awesome. a goal of mine this year we uh, and it's not something that we'll wait for the next round of a master schedule next year to do. We have to meet these kids' needs now. Like, we have to figure this out. Yeah, um, oh, there's... So, yeah, so we're continuing to, to try to figure out how to get the interventions to kids in all areas that they need it and not have to prioritize. And that was something that all the special educators, we've done it here and there with certain kids. You know, we have some kids, especially older kids, who don't want to be pulled mm -hmm. and would rather come in before anyone's even here so they mm -hmm. don't know they're getting services. Um, so it's a model we've used, but not in this way. Mm -hmm. So it is pretty exciting. Yeah. The younger ones are like, take me. Take yeah, me. right. And they're like, can I go with him? <laughs> not so much when you get to sixth grade, usually. Us to fiscal. Yeah, and there really hasn't been much of a change. I know Alicia could do this as well. It's just we're running the budget. I mean, there hasn't been any change in the, in the fund balance, the projected fund balance. So but we'll get to January. That'll be the next time because we'll have re-enrollment for benefits. It happens January 1. Yeah. Um, one thing that I should bring to your attention that we're having looked at as far as facilities goes, and it's not in my report, but I've asked Todd to look into it. Um, we have, as you know, and it was a hot topic during construction, the path that needed to be, mm -hmm. right? That was a big issue. It's not really a path anymore because the grass has grown and it's... it. It's, it's a really big challenge to keep it a path, especially in the winter, um, although I would say in the summer also. Um, so I had Todd ask for some quotes on what would, it look, what would it cost to pave it so it's actually a path, or what would it look like to have concrete like the sidewalks. So just so you know, um, because it's, it is, I mean, there's the, the path, the stones and the path are actually all in the grass, and the grass is all in the or path. Or in the school. Mm -hmm. Or, or in the school, <laughs> tracked in. So it's a, it is an issue, um, and it's been one we've been dealing with for four years, but it's really actually kind of, nobody I, would go out there and I say they have a path. I noticed it on the Harvest you did Festival. Notice. I was out there, and it was. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Todd brought me out, actually, probably a month ago, and he was actually concerned about the safety as well. With the metal. With the metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is an issue for safety and and also, that is our fire escape route, and we have, mm -hmm. you know, and we have a fire drill. He has to maintain that. It's not just for, mm -hmm. like, to say we put it there to. No, the whole keep reason the, that the path is there was for accessibility. Right. Yeah. And Which it's still not boggles access, my mind that we had to do basement. it for accessibility, but it has stairs. But yes, that is true. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was no way around it. <laughs> no, I um, recognize that. It's just a very strange. So what I can tell you, um, 
the, the good news is, is that because we had to put the stone in, it's very well prepped, and a lot of the expense is actually taken out. Prep. It's already mm -hmm. there. Um, but I will bring back a figure to you, but it's just something for you to, mm -hmm. to so know. Is the removal of the metal, or...? or the metal would come, come out. Come out. Yeah. yeah. It also gets caught up in the mower, and, you know, it gets pulled out of the ground. Tires. Yeah. yeah. And actually, Pops, brought, I yeah. was out there with the kids a couple of weeks ago, too, and just... Well, I was like, oh yeah, I asked the teachers, and they're like, yeah, somebody's gonna break their their son. Yes, it's it's <laughs> yeah. actually yeah. Okay. I believe we are on to executive committee. And Steve left, but I can give you. Not here. The minutes are there. The minutes too. are in there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The big news is that they're coming back for the executive committee. We're com we're meeting again t tomorrow night. For draft two of the budget, the big piece that was talked about in there was um, the budget was presented, at a, as I said earlier, at a 1.96% increase. And there um, was an ask of, you know, it just been, we presented this budget right after this student monitoring. So, what more, if there were additional resources, what could we impact uh, to, in, to improve student outcomes? So, the leadership team met. Last week, mm -hmm. we show was last mm -hmm. week, and we did some work on that. Um, and uh, the real variable is what I said earlier is, um, and you know I'm going to be saying more of this tomorrow night. But um, we could, you know, we've got some good, we've got some ideas, but we need to work with our staffs. And I've learned it's taken me a long time to learn that in Washington Central you don't lead with the staff because if you lead with the staff, the board. Um, you can't lead with the staff or the board first. You have to lead with them both at the same time. So if the board asks for ideas, you got to have time to go develop them with the staff. And if the staff develops ideas and the boards don't know about it, so you've got to do that simultaneously. So in three weeks, we can get some good ideas. We can tell you about proximate costs. And we, we actually developed what we thought we could do within the next year, but it would take, I don't want to roll out specifics. It's a, about being specific enough, but vague to say we got to go work with our colleagues on this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can I ask a question okay. about the minutes? Yeah. It looked like you did a lot, and it says it lasted half an hour. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a well-run meeting. Gee. I saw it start at five thirty-one and ended at six oh four, and I we thought, flew. that might be a typo. I needed to be out of there by 6.15 to get to my daughter's concert at 7 o'clock in Morrisville. And I was leaving at 6.15. And Matthew helped me. Maybe we're thinking about scheduling uh, a concert for Bill's daughter every time. I think right. <laughs> so. Can we do that for the full board meeting? <laughs> Maybe. Yes. I'm going to go see a concert. Uh, I just, uh, and not an effort to prolong this meeting, but what's the salary analysis for so we had last year proposed that for we have a lot of non-bargaining positions, mm -hmm. okay. and um, I know enough about some other areas because I used to work in those areas or had other job positions in the supervisory union that know that our salaries are not necessarily competitive with outside salaries, and we can lose people. We actually know that some of our positions that you can get paid higher by the state of Vermont. We know some of our other positions we pay higher than the state of Vermont. But if we're gonna, we wanna retain, the, the biggest gain for human resources is retaining your personnel mm -hmm. and growing them. But if you don't pay them appropriately, then you can't retain them. You. you can't retain them. And so we have a lot of non-bargaining actually. Um, we probably have about a, a quarter of our staff is non-bargaining. Maybe not quite that high. A quarter of the, everybody. Everybody in the SU. Maybe There's enough. three on this building. No, I'm okay. talking about no, because there's we have ESP. Oh, we have ESP. We have an ESP association, but we have not. We have the non-bargaining as well. So um, that was we had set the board approved for an analysis for that to be done, um, but we're uh, we just can't pull together the time from inside to support that analysis to be done. Um, so there's some other work that we're that we're trying to do right now. And when you look at that, you're looking at every part of that salary, as far as you mean total cost. Total, total cost. Bargaining. Total cost. Yeah, yeah. Total it's, cost. It's but I mean, I need. I mean, I need to look at it. I do look when I set a principal salary. Um, I look at 
across Vermont and within our SU. Um, you know, if we go to one association, I expect there to be an administrator's association pretty quick. Not because they need to do it, it's just, it's what ha once you get over a bargaining unit of eight, you can have your own association. And that usually happens. So you better have good metrics for setting all the salaries. Committee. We haven't met. Um, well, could we, uh, couldn't meet when we were scheduled <coughs> in November, but we're going to be able to meet the Monday before our carousel meeting. So we will have met then, so there's nothing to report. School Quality Committee? Oh. Yeah, we met, <laughs> it's just that all of the meetings are blurred. <laughs> we yeah. met. Like uh, we met this. The hats that you wear. <laughs> the, we it's met this week in. Uh, it, it was a, it was actually a great meeting. I actually had I did underline a couple of things uh, here. Let me open it up. But I keep saying that it's my favorite committee, and it is. We do a lot of work. <laughs> we do, besides this meeting, which I love, uh, it's, uh, we do get a lot of. Uh, Work. Well, it's forward-looking work. I mean, yeah, it's forward-looking, and yeah. it's the work that we want to be involved with. It's right. more it's closer to the kids. I don't know how to explain mm -hmm. it. So we talk about uh, how grateful we were for the monitor report that uh, the, that the teacher. Similar conversations that we had our in the small in the in the small mm -hmm. groups, and then uh, Carrie's. We're going to try to have something for December fifth. And Carrie just sent something out for us to to review and you know to really think about what what we want uh, next. And let me just open the monitoring. Here it is. Uh, so what the goal, so he just sent a, a goal. I haven't gone through it, so it would be preliminary to try to say something. He wants input from all of us, and we are going to present something on December on December 5th to all the boards. And what, what is that going to look like? I, I, do not, I do not know yet. Yes, ma'am. I mean, there were three or four specific things that came up at the meeting, but I don't know where the committee is going with those things. Yeah, so what, what he did is just he sent us some uh, uh, options and we we're sending him input on, yes. on the three specific. So it would be preliminary, I think, to tell you what we're doing and not be what you're thinking. But basically, it's how we get better at, at monitoring. There were a lot of great com conversations of uh, exactly what we just shared now. Are we, is there anything that we're missing in this, uh, in this picture? You know, the, how can we bring in, and Bill talked about this, how can we bring the, the, the survey that we do for every school, the, forgetting the name of it, yeah. the climate, 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 climate survey. survey. So there were some conversations around that, but really right now it's like, what are we gonna do about math and literacy, right? We've all been talking about what are our, mm -hmm. our, our goals. So there were a lot of conversations around, around that and we were pretty, Quick too. It was a short. We it was the it was the longest of the ones that we had, but it's, it's a, it was a short planning meeting on what to do on December fifth. And I'm gonna just see what it says here. Sorry. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. Too many windows open, and it's getting really slow. Sorry about that. I can't bring it up, but I, you know, you will get it on December on December fifth. I can't get it to open on my actual email. I can't 
cool it out. Okay. Sorry. That's, that's all right. I think I'm going to move us to negotiations. Steve's on that for you, but um, issues have been exchanged between the associ teachers' association and the boards, and. Uh, the first negotiation meeting is Monday the 26th. So IBB trainings happen for everybody and we're getting going. And we have a temporary MO, a tentative agreement on MOU for the rest of the healthcare administration, HRA administration from January to June 30th. Mm -hmm. So that was done as well. Some good work. I think that brings us to the board order is close to our last yeah, item of business. She sent it today. Yeah, she said Carla sends them to you just so you see them. But. I would take a motion for the board order. Lindy has, it's 41,868, uh, 31. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. Sorry, I probably sort of mumbled that. Okay. <coughs> You need a second? A second? Uh, I would take a motion. Oh, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Thank you. I usually don't make motions as the chair. Um, so I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of the board order as presented? And if the, yes? Yes. Uh, seeing a none and hearing none, all of those in favor, please <laughs> Sorry, say aye. I was trying to find the thing. <laughs> I found it. Oh, you found that. Okay. I found it. So I'll we'll move back to school quality for a second. Move we'll back to school uh, quality. So the fourth thing. So first, that the committee appreciates several uh, uh, aspects of of the goal that is highly relevant to all our students, that is based on objective evidence, and it sets specific Excuse targets me. in defined time frame, and and that is ambitious. So that's what we appreciated of the Meyer report. But we also, uh, what we are asking is to adopt a set of math learning goals, which you guys already kind of did with mm -hmm. the percentages. But we want to request comparable goals for literacy for the current year, mm -hmm. too. And ask for a reflection by teachers and administrators and individually and collectively after the year end of the goal setting process and actual student learning. Uh, and from this, we will, you know, this is a, like a big goal. From this, we would like to create a multi year significant improvement for both literacy and math. So that's sort of the bigger, so we're gonna, you know, this is like a little letter, I'm just reading you a snippet of it, and we're giving Carrie input on that from our meeting. Great. Yep. Um, so I um, need to move us into executive <laughs> session for a minute. Um, we, but our, we don't have any action to take once we come out. Okay. So um, the only piece of update that you'll need is what time we came out. Yeah. Um, Did,